Uh, my name is Vikram Kulkarni, and I am joined by my colleague Anand Prasad, and I'm also joined by Sanjeev, and we work for GL Communications. And thank you all for attending this webinar. Uh, we hope that this will be very productive and very informative for you. Uh, the title of today's webinar is Ethernet Testing Solutions Packet Check. So we're going to focus on our software product packet check in this uh, webinar. Um, many of you may know GL Communications and some of you may not. Uh, so just briefly uh, an overview about our company. We were founded in 1986 and we're headquartered in Gaithersburg, Maryland, USA. But we also have branch offices in Bangalore, India and Shanghai, China. Um, we have both a consulting branch and a products branch. And on the product side, we make test and measurement equipment for virtually all networks, whether it's you know Ethernet IP networks, whether it's wireless networks, cellular networks, um, Sonnet, SDH, or, or even legacy networks like TDM and the public switch telephone network. Basically, all networks out there, uh, we make test and measurement equipment for those networks. So please talk to us and, and email us and contact us uh, and call us at any time to learn more. All right, so the agenda for today, um, before we just jump into packet check, I wanna kind of motivate the problem and kind of set the, set the stage a little bit by talking about ethernet and why it's so uh, uh, ubiquitous. And then I'll discuss network impairments and then Ethernet and IP testing, and specifically why you should care about Ethernet and IP testing, why it's important. Uh, I will then um, briefly mention some testing considerations. Uh, every customer we interact with has different uh, test cases. So um, we've, over the years, we've, we've uh, interacted with many customers and they all wanna test different types of things. So we'll talk about different test considerations. And then Anand will take over and he'll dive into packet check and walk you through what the software looks like and uh, how to use it and what it's used for and some other you know, different types of situations where you can deploy it. And so we'll do a deep dive on packet check and then we'll end with some conclusions. I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell, uh, tell you this, but Ethernet is ubiquitous these days. Pretty much everything except for the backbone is running some sort of ethernet variant, whether it's a local area network or whether it's a metropolitan area network. Uh, ethernet is everywhere. And ethernet is fast and ethernet is reliable because of the small collision domains and the collision detection schemes and so on. So ethernet is rapidly replacing all the other legacy technologies and it's important to understand it and how to test Ethernet networks. Okay, so even though Ethernet is great, uh, just like any other network, it can be subject to impairments. And there's a lot of stuff that can still go wrong on any network, and Ethernet is no exception. Uh, so what can go wrong? That's, it's important to consider that. Um, first of all, in this red box here on the left, uh, I've listed some of the possible things that can happen on a network. Things like faulty equipment, overloaded equipment, interference, which can come into place if you, you, know, if you have wireless networks, uh, unexpected events like power outages, uh, rerouting if you have any proxies or VPNs and things like that, and cyber attacks, of course. So there's a lot, and that's just a small subset, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong on a network. So what does that lead to? What does all that stuff in the left red box lead to? Well, the stuff in the right red box, uh, these are kind of the observables that you'll notice on a network. Things like frame loss, packet loss, frame errors and bit errors, out of order packets, duplicate packets, latency, jitter, congestion. These are like the observables you'll see on a network, but they're caused by all the uh, stuff on the left there. Now, ultimately, uh, senior leaders and senior management, what do they care about? They may not care about 0.2% packet loss. That may mean nothing to them. 
What they care about is a loss of mission critical capabilities or a loss of business functions. So what does that mean? So if you're some sort of government or an agency or a large corporation or small company or anything in between, uh, what you kind of have to ask yourself, what are your company's mission critical capabilities and your business functions? Like, for instance, do you need crystal clear voice over IP communication at all times? Is that a mission critical capability for you? Uh, do you need a, uh, a, a very solid VPN connection because you need to share data between different locations around the world? Uh, do you need real-time, high-definition video streams? Uh, all these types of things can easily be impacted by your observables like frame loss and out-of-order frames and, duplicate and, and latency and so on. So uh, always kind of think big picture um, and, and try to understand what your company or corporation or agency's mission-critical capabilities and business functions are and how they can be of impacted by these type of networks and network impairments because they they are very sensitive to this stuff. So like I mentioned, we have a lot of different customers over the years and our customers always want to test different things. Uh, some customers just want to test a single device like a cable or a switch or a router or some other layer two, layer three device. Um, some customers want to test an end-to-end -end network or some VPN, or some wide, wide area network, or some client to server connection, or client to client connection, which could be, you know, to happen between two computers on opposite ends of the globe. So we have a, a, a diverse range of customers and they all wanna test different things. So that's one, th one testing consideration is what exactly do you want to test? Another testing consideration is when to test and you know what frequency do you want to test at? Um, you may want to test at a certain time of day. You may want to just test when when you're under high or low uh, capacity, low, uh, high or low stress. Um, you may want to test after an infra infrastructure change or some sort of software upgrade or some sort of circuit handover. Perhaps you just want to test once because you're you just want to do some acceptance testing of a, a, a piece of equipment that's ready to be shipped. Uh, so there's all sorts of different times that you want to test. And again, our customers uh, have different requirements there. And finally, how to test. So there's a lot of different tests you can do. Probably the simplest one is bit error rate testing uh, on layer one, on layer two, layer 2.5, three, four, um, and so on. So you can do bit error rate testing. You can also test for frame loss and throughput and latency. Uh, and all of these tests can be done at different, with different parameters, like at different speeds, different frame sizes, at different layers of the OSI model, and so on. So there's a huge scope to Ethernet and IP testing. And this on, on this slide, I'm, I'm just trying to get across some of the considerations that you may have and and everybody is of course different um, but you'll see as we start talking about packet check why packet check can cover a diverse range of test cases um, so packet check what geo communications we feel that packet check is a very simple easy to use comprehensive ethernet ip testing tool basically Packet Check is a software program that can generate traffic at layer one, two, three, and four of the OSI model. So it can generate, you know, just raw bits uh, at the physical layer. It can gen it can um, generate Ethernet frames. It can add VLAN tags and MPLS headers. Uh, it can generate IP packets. And at the transport layer, it can generate UDP frames. So packet check is very good if you just want to, for, for testing layer one through four of the OSI model. Now, GL Communications has other products that can test uh, TCP, for instance, and, and so on. But packet check is 
its bread and butter is layer one through four of the OSI model, and specifically at layer four, UDP. Uh, so this is just kind of a summary of that. So Packet Check is, uh, like I said, it's a software program. Uh, many of GL's products are hardware-based, but Packet Check is one of our uh, software-based applications. So this Packet Check software runs on a Windows 7, Windows 10, 32-bit, 64-bit operating system. It's, it's very easy to install and hit the ground running with. And typically, our customers buy two licenses of Packet Check so that they can test it on an end-to-end -end network. Uh, so any sort of enterprise local area network or wide area network, um, you can deploy two instances of Packet Check and run an end-to-end -end test. Uh, Packet Check uses the PC's network interface card to transmit and receive Ethernet or IP packets. And you can achieve throughputs up to 800 megabits per second. And so you can conduct testing at up to uh, basically almost a gig uh, line rate. And it, like I said before, it can generate uh, multi-stream Ethernet ID, IP UDP traffic as well as single stream traffic as well. Uh, Anand will talk about that a little bit later, but it can, if you want to send two separate streams of traffic to two separate IP addresses or two separate um, uh, MAC addresses or two separate UDP ports or three or, or four or five streams, you can do that with Packet Check. Um, and again, the purpose of Packet Check is to measure the end-to-end -end performance, such as the bit error rate, the total packets transmitted, and how many were lost, how many out-of-sequence packets you had, how many errored packets you had. It's a very easy test tool for these situations. Um, so here's just a few applications that I just put together. Maybe you want to know the maximum throughput between two branch offices. Uh, maybe you want to know the precise round trip delay between two endpoints. I'm talking about like microsecond accuracy. Packet, packet check can give you microsecond accuracy. It can do round trip delay or one way delay. Um, it can, if you want to troubleshoot network problems like packet loss and low throughput and check some errors, you can use packet check to help you troubleshoot. And like I said before, you can test a variety of equipment, uh, cable switches, routers, gateways, VPN, full end-to-end -end network paths, and so on. And you can generate test traffic, and you can also play pre-recorded traffic. Uh, sorry to uh, inundate you with more text. Uh, I promise this is the last slide that has a lot of text. Uh, just a couple other main features. You can go up to almost a gig uh, throughput. Uh, you can generate full duplex traffic. Um, you can generate multiple streams of traffic with different parameters. So one... Uh, uh, one, one stream could be going to one IP address, another stream could be going to another IP address. You can do all sorts of different bit error patterns, and you can measure things like the bit error rate, the synchronization status, throughput, packet loss, out of order packets, round trip delay. You can also impair traffic, so you can corrupt the traffic by inserting, deleting, or changing bytes at any offset that you want in the packet. And uh, you can also, it also supports jumbo frames. So, and, and finally, you, you have custom, customizable protocol headers like MAC addresses and length type fields, IP source and destinations, UDP source destinations. So you can customize a lot of the fields in the packets that get sent out. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Anand. And Anand will talk more specifically about the um, various test cases with packet checks. Uh, thank you, Arun, for joining. Myself is Anand Prasad. Uh, thank you, Vikram, for the detailed explanation. It was a great presentation explaining the importance of uh, IP and the internet testing, uh, considering the various scenarios uh, which uh, are the importance of the IP and internet testing and basically what can go wrong in the network and what kind of uh, testing is required for the IP and Ethernet networks uh, looking at the ubiquitous, uh, like, uh, ubiquitous nature of the network. So following on that, uh, now let's see how package application can be used to test the functionalities and the quality of the network. 
So uh, when we say network, generally there will be a set of systems which will be attached to the networking devices like switches, routers, gateways, etc. And these devices work at different layers of the OSI model using various protocols. So packet check application helps test the functionalities of such network devices and also provide an overall analysis of the network. So we'll go through the slide, the following slides will explain how packet check can be used to test the network at various layers. So the slide that we are now observing explains uh, how we can test uh, the network at the physical layer uh, by using two packet check instances. So we can see here on two test PCs, uh, we are running packet check instances. And these two PCs are connected directly using a physical cable. So it's just a point-to-point -point link here. There is no addressing involved. And there is no routing or switching kind of thing. So it can just test that from this system, we have got a proper connectivity to the other system. And even before we can go further uh, details into the testing, it's better to understand what are the operating modes of packet check. So here we can see that this PC1 has written TX and RX mode. And here in PC2, it is TX RX mode for the loopback mode. So the normal mode for the TX RX mode is one which we define multiple traffic streams. So those streams can be configured at various layers, like we want only Ethernet, or we want to add the transport layer or the network layer like that. So we can define and uh, create multiple streams. And each stream is configured individually as either transmit only, receive only, or both transmit and receive. So as per the stream configuration, the traffic will be generated on those streams. And also the receive traffic is mapped to one of the streams. And that traffic is analyzed and the detailed statistics will be provided. So that gives an insight into what the network quality is. So that is about the normal mode. And if you, if you look at the loopback mode, so as the name suggests, here the received or the incoming traffic from the NIC is looped back into the network again. So in loopback mode, uh, we don't have to define any streams. We don't have to configure any streams there, but just uh, select the NIC interface on which we want to loop it back. So all the traffic that is being received on the NIC is sent back to the network again by swapping the source and destination addresses at different layers. So here, the old user has to only select at which layer I want to look at the traffic. So for example, I want to look back at layer 4. It means that starting from the MAC layer, IP and UDP, all the layer addresses or say the UDP ports will be swapped of the incoming traffic and then it is sent back to the network again. Uh, so when configured in loopback mode, packet check will not have any streams and hence we don't have the statistics uh, per stream there. So we will provide a general statistics like what is the total number of packets received and how many packets have been transmitted back, what is the Rx rate, what is the Tx rate, and are there any packet drops. So such statistics will be provided. So the loopback mode can be very useful like that. I will have to configure the streams on one side here and then set the packet check in the loopback mode uh, so that we can just uh, get back the packets what we're transmitting here. And this packet instance can look into the received packets and compare them and give detailed statistics about uh, the network quality. So in this scenario, where we are trying to check at the test of the physical air connectivity, uh, we are going to uh, just create one stream because it is a physical layer. And what goes here on this line is going to be pure payload. So we don't have any header fields here of any layers. Uh, so the entire frame is made up of the payload so if we have both uh, payload running on this physical connection, so when it loops back here, or if it is in the TXRX mode, both the PCs can receive, send and receive the traffic, and then analyze the BERT traffic, and then do statistics about uh, is there any BERT error there, and at what rate the error is observed, and how many packets have been sent, is there any packet loss, all those things. Uh, going next, so this one, uh, explains about uh, uh, testing the IP and Ethernet ports at the layer two. So when we say layer two, uh, we will have a layer two switch and a few systems connected to that. So uh, uh, as we know that a layer two switch keeps learning about uh, the port mapping. Uh, let's say 
uh, we have multiple systems connected and uh, to reach a specific host uh, which is the outgoing port so that kind of learning switch will be making all the time and we want to conduct a test which can confirm us that as the switch is actually doing the proper switching at layer 2 so we can configure uh, the packet check instances here as we say like the source pc here uh, one uh, packet check instance we can uh, configure with the uh, layer 2 stream and equally here also the destination pc uh, we can configure another uh, stream and uh, here we can just one reference where written like mac address is just all bb here and here in the source pc it's all aaa so once this packet check instance with one stream with proper configuration of the mac Will uh, address us if it sends a packet out. We expect that the switch identifies what is the outgoing port in order to reach this host, which has the MAC address as BPP. So it has to find out that and then send the or say uh, forward the packet to the proper host. So in case we have multiple such systems connected to the switch, so we can configure multiple streams in this packet check instances and test that okay, we are able to reach the proper host when we send the traffic. So again, here in this case also, it could be uh, just a TXRX mode on both the sides or what can be the loopback mode. So it basically will test the layer two switch functionality. So come to the next one. Uh, here we are testing the, a layer three or four switch. So basically at the four client is going to be transport uh, where we will have the UDP ports, but at the layer three, it's basically the IP address. Uh, so in this case the systems are shown to be connected to a layer 3 switch so on the source pc side uh, we have one system and on the destination side we have one system so it but generally it would be having multiple switch multiple systems uh, connected to the layer 3 switch and uh, the layer 3 switch works at the ip address so here the resolution of the destination route happens uh, depending on the destination ip of, of the receive packet so in this case on the source side, let's say the packet check instance here can configure multiple streams by defining a multiple destination IP addresses. And similarly, here the destination PC also can configure uh, multiple streams and then define what are the destination it want to reach via the switch. Uh, when we configure like this and then start the packet check on both the sides, the packets will be sent to the switch and the switch has to look into the destination IP address and then properly route those packets. And uh, if an equal stream has been defined here, it can look into the received packets and then map it to the streams and then view the statistics. Now, I'm understanding this packet, it is for me only, and we have a stream defined here for that. And it kind of do kind of, kind of analysis and then give and then give a report that has been able to receive all the packets or if there is any loss of packets or are there any out of order packets. And uh, if we are setting the board as the payload, it can, uh, do the BERT analysis and then do the big data or that. So here in this case, uh, the importance is that uh, we are able to generate the traffic at the IP layer and then test the switch that it is able to resolve uh, the layer three addresses and then map them to the proper destination. Here uh, it shows uh, a similar one. The importance of the uh, uh, previous at uh, this one is that we can understand here both the PCs are in a single subnet that is 192, 168, to one. Dot one and the one is one to one sixty to one two. So basically, they are on the same network. Uh, so this is one kind of scenario where a layer three switch uh, can be tested. And the other one is here, the source and destination pieces are located on different IP networks. So here we can see. So this is one network here. So uh, this IP address, if I look at it, is one to one sixty eight one dot one. So it is one sixty eight dot one subnet. And here we have another network. So this is on the 192.168.2 subnetwork. If at all I want to communicate between these two systems, which are actually present in two different subnets, then we cannot directly talk to each other because they're not part of the same subnet. So here we need kind of a router or a gateway which connects these two networks and then pass the packets across the subnets. So in this situation also, the packet check can uh, be used uh, to conduct the test uh, for the reachability uh, between these two subnets. And uh, here we can see that, again, we can define multiple packet text streams here. And uh, this switch is responsible for handling this network. And this is responsible for this network. And uh, in any case, this one of the pieces in this network and this subnet want to reach here. So then this switch has to 
take help of this router it has to forward this packet here and this has to understand that yes this belongs to this subnet it has to forward here again so this kind of switch functionalities can be tested by having packet check instances in two subnets and those subnets are connected by a router or a default gateway and here means as you can see this switch itself is having its own ip address the same subnet that is 182.168.100 and here in the uh, two subnet so these two are responsible for this and this and here connected by a router and uh, conduct the uh, test between these two and here also we are going to get um, all the detailed statistics about the network uh, again those statistics include is there any packet loss there or is there an out of order packet and what is the um, uh, a bit rate error if at all there is a uh, packet loss with at what rate the bit errors are observed all those detailed statistics will be provided and also when it provides uh, at what uh, rate means uh, the tx throughput and the rx throughput is also detected and it is shown the statistics for each stream uh, here for episodes i showed only one uh, pc here which is connected to the uh, each subnets but uh, practically we can have multiple systems connected to uh, on each subnet and we can uh, uh, create multiple uh, IP for Ethernet streams across these two subnets and then connect test on multiple IP streams. And uh, as you can see, the layer 3 and 4. Uh, in the fourth layer, it is basically the UDP that is what is supported. Uh, so here we can uh, define what uh, UDP port I want in the stream. And on that port, uh, we can send the word payload and the streams will be receiving those traffic and then go up to the UDP layer, extract the payload and compare against the a predefined bird pattern and give us the results of the bird comparison. So now we will uh, go over the actual application and then see some screenshots and how to use the application, what are the options available within the application. Also, this is one such slide that shows the initial configuration of the application. And as I was previously discussing that uh, we have got two modes, one is the normal and there is low back. So here it is shown like uh, a uh, normal mode is selected. And this section uh, allows us to select the NIC interface. So the application is going to automatically detect first the available NIC interfaces. And out of that, it allows us to choose which interface we want to work on. So whichever we select here, uh, the attributes of that interface are displayed here. So as we can see, what is the name of the driver, the description of that, what is the MAC address, what is the IP address, what is the link type, speed, uh, maximum payload size, and media state, whether it is currently connected or disconnected. So this is some basic information about the selected NIC interface. And once we choose which we want, then we can start the packet set application with this option. And this is the main uh, GUI of the application where it shows about what the streams, and what are the different configurations available for each stream and what are the statistics for the stream. Uh, here we can see that these are the streams which we can add, delete, or insert and create as many we want. And for the selected stream here, these options will allow us to configure them. So as you can see here, in this tab called as layer by direction, we can define whether it wants to be TXRX, that is full duplex, or we can make it as transmit only or receive only. And accordingly, we can select what all layers we want, say that it's 2, 3, and 4. So it can be Ethernet, IP, and UDP. And it is all optional. Whichever we want, we can enable those types. And this uh, part of the application shows the statistics. So for each stream, we are going to have detailed statistics. So you can see here, uh, what is the stream name, and what is the mode, TX frames, what is the rate, uh, similarly for the RX and RX rate. So detailed statistics has been provided, and these statistics are going to provide an insight into the quality of the network. So, for example, out of order frames, last frames, and uh, a bit error, for example, error status, whether it is in sync or a sync, if it happens to be the bird payload. So this is the main application. And here, one more thing is this traffic generation mode. The traffic generation mode can be either a burst or IFZ. So in case of burst, uh, the importance is for achieving the throughput. So the traffic will be bursty mode, and uh, uh, each stream can be configured with the, the maximum throughput for the TX, and uh, the application will try to attempt that that uh, attribute is achieved. And the case of IFZ, that is interframe gap, 
uh, the time gap between the two successive frames is maintained. So it is a configurable user can configure that. I want to uh, say uh, X milliseconds between the two frames. Uh, considering about the VYD kind of traffic, uh, we want to maintain a 20 millisecond gap between the frames. So that kind of a situation like simulations can be made using the IFC mode. So here the importance is not for the throughput, but for maintaining that IFC. Uh, this shows about what are the uh, configurations available for the stream. As I was talking in the previous slide, so we have here, here enabled Ethernet, IP, and UDP. And using these tabs like IP, UDP, we can configure the parameters for that. Maybe in the next slide, we will have details about that. So this uh, is uh, showing about how we can add multiple streams or uh, we can delete already added streams, or we can insert between the already added streams. So this is one such a simple feature which is flexibility of adding and deleting and inserting the streams. Okay, so this is uh, an important uh, thing like where we can uh, customize the protocol headers as per requirement. Uh, so in the, uh, in the previous slide we saw that under the layer of direction tab, we can select uh, what all the uh, layers we want and accordingly, we can configure now. So if I go to the Ethernet, the MAC tab allows us to configure what source MAC we want and what destination MAC we want and what should be the value for the type parallel field. Uh, if you want to really use the interface uh, MAC address of the NIC that we have selected when we launch the application, by using this one, we can just select that and the actual MAC of the NIC will be used. And if you know that we know the destination IP address and we want to resolve the MAC of that, so using this button, we can resolve by giving the IP address. The application is going to automatically resolve that using the ARP and select the destination MAC address. Equally here, so we have a type or length field. Um, assume that it is not, uh, if the layer is configured for just layer two, then we don't have uh, upper layers like IP and UDP. In that case, it becomes the length field and we can define what length we want. Or if the stream is configured for a layer three and above, then we can select what protocol field or the what type field we want. So the one shown here is 000, that's the standard type value for the IP. And as you can see here, so Ethernet and IP is there, and equally we have the application has chosen this 0800 as the type field for the Ethernet. So the next uh, in the layer is this IP. Uh, so within IP, so we have these fields. So we can define what is the source IP address and what is the subnet mask for that. And as for uh, the MAC, we have this use interface address. Here we have use interface address again. Like for the select ethnic interface, there is already an assigned IP address. And we want to use that only. Then just by clicking on this use interface address, that IP address is automatically selected. And uh, here the destination. So for the destination IP address, uh, we can choose which destination we want to reach to, and we can then define that here. And uh, in the one of the slides we were explaining where we want to conduct the test across two subnets. So in that case, uh, the destination might be on a sub, uh, different subnet, and uh, the source is on a different subnet. So in that case, we'll have to just enable this default gateway. So as we saw in the previous slide, two subnets are getting connected by default out of there. Just enable this one and then give what is the default gateway so that the packet will first reach that gateway and then that takes over to the next subnet. So just to enable that. And uh, other parameters are like uh, type of service or differences of services and the TTL and the protocol. So TTL says 128 or it can be any value that you use it desires. Well, let's say that I want to test uh, the routing capability that whether it can really drop a packet because TTL reached zero value. So we can just say set to one and then try to send the packet across uh, the router there. And the router may say that, okay, uh, I have reached the zero TTL value and it can send back an ICT packet to the source indicating that this packet cannot be forwarded further. Such kind of situations can be tested. And another one here is protocol. This is 17, uh, depending on what layer four a protocol is used, this protocol field is defined here. But uh, again, the user has got full flexibility. He can choose whichever value he wants here. That might be wrong with respect to what uh, protocol is being uh, really carried there, but that could be one negative test case for the user to test it. So uh, in the layer four, UDP is there. So as part of UDP, there is a configuration like 
what source port I want and what destination port I want. Just uh, configure here. So these are the different uh, uh, configurations available for the headers uh, of the uh, of the packet that we're trying to generate. So now to the next one, uh, it uh, tells about the configurations available for the payload. Uh, so we have around uh, three types of payload that can be configured for the streams. So one of them is this PRBS patterns, basically the bird pattern. And we have a list like we can refer here. Uh, there are uh, supported patterns like QRSS 206 minus 1, 9 minus 1, 211, 15, such. So various uh, board patterns uh, it selects, it is uh, supporting. And even we can have an option like the invert pattern. So if it is enabled, the pattern is actually inverted before transmission. And even though we received, uh, will be compared against the inverted one. The other one type is this fixed pattern. So fixed pattern is where the user has to enter some hex uh, data here. So as per his requirements, if he has got some custom data that he wants to send as part of the payload of a stream, then he can select this uh, payload type as fixed pattern and then enter the da data here. So that will be uh, taken as a payload and then packet will be formed with that. And another one is this HDL file. Uh, HDL file is a proprietary GL file format where uh, the protocol data uh, fields are stored, means the entire packet is uh, stored in a particular file format. And the application understands that file format. Uh, that should be one of the uh, source types for the uh, traffic. And all the frames present in that SDL file will be taken and made as payload of the stream, which will be attached with the, the stream headers, stream header, I mean, whatever we have. Uh, configure like Mac, IP, and UDP we want. So all those headers will be added there and the packet will be generated. So these are our different uh, our types of traffic that the application supports. And along with that, we have your options like uh, sequence number and magic number. This will help us in identifying is there any uh, packet loss or auto order packets. And the magic pattern enables identify that, okay, this packet is actually sent by another instance of packet set. So the test packet or the non-test packet kind of statistics uh, will be available with the help of magic pattern. Uh, so I think this is uh, about the payload type. And uh, here, uh, this uh, provides uh, some uh, options that the application supports on the TX and RX parameters. Uh, so on the TX parameters, like we have options like uh, what should be the frame size? So it could be a fixed one, where we can see here like minimum and maximum once it is fixed. So both will be the same. So this is uh, the maximum supported, uh, not a jumbo frame, but a normal uh, Nikud support up to this size. And this is uh, uh, the range, like from 60 to 8996. So uh, uh, this 8996 uh, for sure is the frame of the jumbo uh, packet. If at all the NIC is configured to support the jumbo frame, then the application can generate packets up to that size. And uh, if we don't have the fixed one, then we can make it as a random one and uh, between a min and max. So this min and max can be then different. Uh, we can give a range like, so from 100 to 1000, I want to generate. And we can uh, define how the packet should be, how the packet should be selected, like it is increasing. We start from 100 and go up to 1000 and again come back to 100. Or it's decreasing where we start from maximum and we come to minimum or the statistical distribution. So randomly, the packet sizes will be chosen between the given range. So we don't exactly in what order those packet sizes will be. And this is just like we want to simulate a real-time uh, uh, traffic where the packets can be of any size. So the statistical distribution would uh, simulate that kind of uh, scenarios. And this is a stop condition, like how long we want to uh, transmit the packets, whether it is uh, going to be a continuous uh, generation or it's the end of file, or end of file in the sense, suppose we're making use of a, a HDL file as the source type, then end of file is applicable. And there is a duration, like in seconds, how many seconds I want to transmit. After so many seconds, the TX would automatically stop. Or even we can define uh, the duration by number of frames. So transmit, say, around 1,000 packets or 1 lakh packets, and then stop automatically. And here, this is another important uh, configuration where uh, we define what is the rate for a particular stream. So uh, it can be defined in terms of percentage. 
or even we can select in terms of megabytes or kilobytes or just bits per second also. Uh, so 100% it means that we want to acquire the link at the full line rate. Now IFZ, so again uh, it's applicable depending upon what mode of a traffic generation we have chosen. Uh, just uh, like previously I was explaining, there are two modes. One is uh, burst mode and there is IFC mode. If IFC is enabled, then this configuration tells that this is the uh, time interval between the two successive packets on a given string. This is uh, this uh, tells about RX parameters. On the RX, though, like we don't have much configuration. It is only about recording the received data either to a binary file or to a SGM file, so that we can look, we can conduct uh, some kind of analysis on the received packet. So if it is SGL, so GL has got analysis tools, we have own protocol analyzers, so that file can be uh, weaved in one of the analyzers, like packet scan. Okay. And another option is generate BERT log. Uh, suppose if we are conducting a BERT test, and the BERT comparison will result in a detailed log about which frames have failed for comparison, what error rate it has introduced at that packet interval. And again, for uh, RX also, we have a stop condition. We want continuously receive or duration like this, whatever we have configured here, or the number of frames. So we just receive one lakh or one million and then just stop receiving. Uh, again, this is the same thing that we discussed. Uh, this explains about, as I was previously explaining about the modes, this is one of the uh, like GUI options available for the low pack mode. And here we can see that we have enabled layer 3, layer 2, and layer 4 for the low pack. And uh, uh, in this mode, in, like in this configuration, the addresses at the IP and the Ethernet are swapped, and the port numbers of the UDP will be swapped and then sent back. And these are the statistics like uh, how many RX tools have been received and have been sent here. What is the RX rate and all? This is the simple statistics available in the loopback mode. Um, this is uh, the detailed statistics per stream. So we can see here that oh, if I define around say four streams, for each four stream, uh, what is the statistics uh, is shown here. So uh, the mode for this is only just transmit and it is only this when it is both GXRX. So this is the transmit frames, and these are the this is the rate, and these are the RX frames, RX rate, lost packets, uh, lost frames. Web it has not seen any of those, so it just uh, shown that it is not applicable there. So it is uh, another important feature of packet set application is round trip delay. So the application can be uh, configured uh, to uh, calculate the round trip delay. Uh, for a given stream. So it is stream specific. So individually each stream can be enabled for calculating the round trip delay. So RTD is basically the time taken for a packet to travel from this end uh, to the destination and then again come back here. So this is calculated uh, along with the normal traffic of the stream. So uh, for a given interval of time, a special packet uh, with some kind of information like the timestamp will be sent into the network and that packet goes along with the other normal traffic and reaches here and it is looped back and again it will be received by the source here and by comparing the timestamps it is going to calculate what is the round trip delay so it's going to periodically do that at a given interval and that interval is user configurable so at every regular interval it keeps calculating the rtd and then it gives us what is the average rtd uh, so here one important thing is uh, that PC2 has to be always in the loopback mode and the PC1 always has to be in the TXRX mode. So it is a full duplex stream which is capable of transmitting and receiving and this has to be in the loopback mode uh, because whatever we transmit here, we uh, especially send the RTD packet to the timestamp which has to be looped back and analyzed here for the uh, time difference. So finding out the RTD is one of the important attributes of the network, so say for example, uh, for our delay sensitive networks uh, which carry the VoIP or uh, real time voice and video traffic, RTD is an important parameter and uh, it needs to be calculated. And uh, another feature is one way delay. So, just now we uh, discussed about the RTD that tells about the round trip, and uh, against that, it is just one way delay that what is the time taken for the packet 
uh, to travel from this side to this side actually that is also uh, is possible using the packet sync application but one thing is that uh, to do this one we need a two packet sync sensors running in a single system here uh, with the two nic interfaces so as you can see here we have nic number one and nic two uh, packet will be a special packet called as OWT packet with a TX timestamp will be injected to the network here and uh, here it is getting looped back to uh, another instance of packet check running on another NIC on the same PC. So we, in this mode, uh, we're going to generate the packet uh, with the OWD TX mode and the uh, NIC2 receiving the OWD RX mode is going to receive that and calculate what is the one-way delay. Maybe it is one of the important features like it can be used for finding out the delay on one side, not the round trip. Uh, and an important feature of packet check application is uh, simulating the real-time network scenarios. So it can be done through impairment feature and a lot of uh, various impairment uh, options are available. As you can see here, uh, we can impair a packet by deleting bytes or by inserting bytes or uh, logically doing operations like AND or and ZAR. So let's say uh, we are generating the uh, packet streams of IP and uh, what happens uh, if I remove uh, some byte from the IP destination IP itself. So the packet may completely go wrong. So the router may be get confused like what is IP address and see how it behaves. That kind of scenarios can be generated. Or we can insert bytes. So some additional bytes can be inserted at a given offset in the packet and then see how network behaves. And uh, one of the other option is like logically operating uh, and or and ZOR at a given offset on a given byte. I can modify that particular byte uh, with operations of and or and or with a given value so i want to add with ff at a given byte so that's going to definitely change the value or or with ff that's going to definitely change the value uh, and by that way if you impair the destination ip address and see how the packet gets sorted there so uh, that can be done with or also or also and uh, this uh, impairment frequency can be uh, configured by uh, selecting how many times you want to repeat here or uh, how many, or you want to just make it continuous, or even select like a skip before impair, like skip 10 frames and then repeat for 200 times, again skip 10 frames, again repeat. So it is a configurable parameter, like how you want to impair the packets. It's basically uh, intentionally introducing the uh, uh, error, so, so as to simulate real time network scenarios. And another uh, thing is this periodic reports. Uh, periodic report is uh, one thing which uh, keeps on uh, uh, reporting, means uh, collecting the uh, statistics of the streams and then uh, writing it to an XML file. Uh, so, and this is again uh, enabled or disabled for each stream individually. The important thing this is uh, this is going to give uh, over a period of time uh, how the behavior of the network. So uh, these the statistical, uh, uh, like, uh, like uh, these periodic reports, uh, which has been long over a period of time, so one hour or 24 hours, uh, can be uh, dumped to the XML file. And these XML files can be uh, referred for offline analysis and then do some kind of uh, plotting of the different parameters, find out how the network was behaving. So one such example is there at the end of the uh, just test. So we will be talking on that, the importance of this periodic reports. Okay, so uh, this is uh, another uh, feature like uh, report generation. Uh, against the one we saw just a periodic report generation, this is at the end of the test. So we are uh, done with the test and then just we want to uh, report, just we want to save the test results and then test configuration everything to one file, either in the PDF format or an XML format. So the application supports that kind of feature, just go to the report generation and then select in what format you want and then just say save. So the entire, all the stream configuration along with the results of each stream uh, will be written to a PDF file or XML file. So which can be uh, referenced later. I think that at this point, uh, Vikram, I will be taking over. Okay, thank you, Anand. Uh, that, was that was fantastic. And um, briefly, uh, go over an example with packet check. Um, as I mentioned before, Geo Communications has uh, a branch office in Bangalore, India, and our headquarters is in Gaithersburg, Maryland. And so what we did is we just um, installed PacketCheck on two computers, one in India and one in the USA. 
And this VPN connection that we wanted to test, first of all, this VPN connection is very important to our company because you know we're constantly sharing files and sharing code back and forth between our USA office and our India office. And we're also talking over the phone a lot, over voice over IP. And so the VPN connection to us is very important. Uh, but here, uh, we just wanted to give you a simple uh, example. So we have the two packet checks set up halfway around the world from each other. And what we did is we just wanted to know what is the round trip delay between the two locations. So we ran a little bit error rate test and we sent ethernet frames at one megabits per second between the endpoints. Actually, we sent it from GL India to our USA office and our USA office packet check was in loopback mode and it would just send the packets right back to our uh, laptop in India. And we just fixed the frame size at 1000 bytes. We ran the test for three hours and we used UDP packets. And all we wanted to know is, you know, what is the round trip delay that we're experiencing? So uh, just to show you the test ran successfully, uh, here's a graph of the round trip delay over this VPN connection. Um, it basically, you see actually for the first hour of the test, the round trip delay kind of fluctuated a little bit, but then towards the second and third hour of the test, you see that the round trip delay uh, between the India and USA office was about 232 milliseconds. Um, like Anand said, and like I said earlier, we have microsecond precision on the v on the round trip and one-way delay measurements. Um, but here, you know, since the scale is much larger, uh, we find that it's about 232 milliseconds for the round trip delay measurement. So this is just a kind of a proof of concept that you can set up two packet checks anywhere in the world you can run an end-to-end -end test and get back data. Okay, so we're right up against the hour. So we'll go ahead and wrap up here. And please don't hesitate to uh, call us or email us or contact us um, if you want to know more about Packet Check or any GL products or if you have any questions. Okay, uh, there is a question uh, about uh, what can we tell a customer uh, who is asking for RFC 2544 and 154 why dot one five six four? I think I answered this question that uh, they can use the packet expert than packet check because packet uh, check uh, does not support this. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that, that's a great question. We have another product which is hardware called Packet Expert, and Packet Expert can do those tests RFC two five four four Y dot one five one five six four. Um, that that is. Uh, for wire speed stuff like RFC 2544, uh, we, ha we offer Packet Expert, and um, we can talk more about that offline. It's, uh, it's basically a fancier version of the Packet Check because it's hardware-based, whereas Packet Check is software-based. Yeah, uh, we have another question. Uh, do you characterize or calibrate the performance of the NIC, PC NIC, etc.? Um, so let's say the NIC is saying it can go up to a gig or let's say the NIC is, is, you know, like 100 megabits per second or something. So you, you can test that by, um, by generating traffic at, at the, at the full speed that the NIC supports. And you can kind of see if you're actually able to, um, uh, get all the packets back or if you have any packet loss and things like that. So. In terms of testing the NIC itself, uh, you can you can test like what throughput it claims to have. I don't, I don't, do you, do you yeah. have a? Yeah, exactly. What I will say is true actually. So the application supports up to uh, one gig line rate. So you can test like by configuring the stream at that rate and then trying to pump it. Can the uh, can the NIC really send at that rate? We can just check it. Uh, any other questions, yeah. Sanjeev? Let me unmute uh, Wayne here. Uh, I think he has uh, some more questions. One moment. Yeah, so the, um, obviously if, if you're testing the network, then the performance of your NIC and your PC and everything is going to influence your results. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. That's true. So when, when you do an end-to-end end -end test uh, between two computers running PacketCheck, um, 
that end-to-end -end test it encompasses everything. It, it encompasses the network in between, but it also encompasses the NICs on each of the computers. Um, so I, I think what you're alluding to is that, you know, if, you, if you're getting poor performance on an end-to-end -end test across a network, it may be something in the network or it may be the NIC itself on the computer. So then you would have to kind of uh, troubleshoot that by perhaps hooking up the computer straight into another computer whose NIC you know is good and then running a, a test that way. That way you get everything else out of the out of the middle and, and you just put the uh, two computers back to back and then perhaps testing the NIC that way. Um, does that kind of help? Yeah, I mean, it's just analogous to any other sort of test equipment that you would, you know, send off to a calibration lab that has a known good standard that you can measure against, but it gets a bit trickier when you're using um, PCs and, and NICs, you know, you can load this software on any old laptop that you have lying around the office, um, and then you're reliant on the performance of that piece of, well, you know, that becomes your test equipment. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. Um, because this is a software-based application, uh, it is kind of at the mercy of the NIC. If you if you want like the NICs totally out of the equation, uh, we we offer Packet Expert, which is hardware-based. So it has like four, it has four ports basically, um, and it, you can you can use that to kind of test something in to do like an end-to-end -end test where you you don't want to really focus on the NICs, but actually the stuff in between. So yeah, the, you're right. Um, packet packet check by virtue of being software based is kind of reliant on the NIC. All right, so we've actually got um, packet check uh, packet expert here as part of a eighty one thirty seven test bed. Great. So maybe we'd be better off um, layering the the software on top of that rather than running it on a laptop. Yeah, pa packet expert. If you've already got packet expert, I, I think that it's better to go with with packet expert. And uh, uh, yeah, the, I agree. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Yeah, uh, we have another question uh, from uh, Rudy. I'll just uh, unmute. Yeah, Rudy, please uh, go ahead with the question. Uh, yeah, well, um, um, NICs have an uh, internal loopback, and I was wondering, um, can't you can you use or can the software use the internal uh, loopback of the NIC uh, for testing the NIC itself, so you are sure that uh, that uh, the NIC is performing as ex as expected? Uh, Anand, do you do you want yeah. to take that one? Uh, like uh, as of now, uh, the application doesn't support looking back at the NIC level. It has to reach up to the application and uh, because we have to do kind of a, a smart loop back where we swap the addresses of the source and destination and send it back. So it's at the application level, not at the NIC level right now. Hello. Uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to know whether that is uh, fine with the permits, that the answer is uh, okay, or any other further questions on that? No, not from my side. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your question, Rudy. Thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah we have uh, one last question. Uh, why would you want to generate the impairments? Uh, was it the was it the requirement of any? I mean, uh, a real-time requirement for generating the oh. experiments? Yeah, uh, well, like being a test application here, uh, we want to uh, give a flexibility where a user can simulate a network of a error kind of situations where we are generating the proper streams, but in between we want to make sure that a packet has been impaired. Say, we want to impair the checksum of an IP packet, or we want to change the destination IP address so that whether the packet gets routed to a different uh, network there, yeah. Or uh, if the checksum has been changed, uh, can it uh, simply drop the packet there? Or uh, can the device detect that, okay, there is a checksum error, and uh, what can do with that? Or as I said, like TTL value, I suppose if I make it zero, can a route drop that packet and then send back an IC message to the source saying that this packet has been dropped? So just we want to simulate those kind of situations uh, which can happen in the real time. So impairments is all about that. 
Yeah, thank you, Anand. Uh, one last question, which which I think everybody would like to know: that what are the advantages of uh, packet check over the uh, there are some free open source uh, tools available for Ethernet testing? Uh, so, like I think uh, packet check is more robust than any one of those uh, freely available applications. And one major uh, difference is that uh, packet check supports a multi-stream uh, at uh, Ethernet IP and UDP and supports a uh, BERT kind of analysis. I don't think any other application supports BERT analysis. And uh, uh, and we will provide a great support for uh, any of the custom changes and all those things uh, where other tools may not be providing that kind of support there. And uh, uh, we uh, do uh, provide like a kind of a report generation and then periodic report generation. I don't think, uh, again, these are available on any of those free tools. And we can just list out any many such things where packet check is uh, substantially different from any of those uh, free tools. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, packet check can do bit error rate testing. It can do, uh, like I said, precise microsecond accuracy on the one-way delay, round-trip delay. Yep. It has a nice, comfortable graphical user interface. Um, it, it, it can give you periodic reports. It can, you can customize all the... A lot, as Anand was showing, it, you can customize a lot of the fields in the packets. Uh, the the packets are very customizable. Um, yeah, and of course, uh, we provide uh, excellent support on the product too. And we are uh, so those are just some of the reasons why uh, Packet Check is is much better than a, a free open source tool. Great, uh, thank you everyone for asking questions and. Uh, I hope you found this informative. Please reach out to us at any time. So um, have a good rest of your morning or afternoon or night, depending on where you are. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.